My name is Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist and co-founder of PsychScene.com. I'd like to share with you our recently published article in the Translational Developmental Psychiatry Journal titled Antiphospholipid Antibodies as Biomarkers in Psychiatry, Review of Psychiatric Manifestations in Antiphospholipid Syndrome. This article was published with my co-author, Dr. Charles Mackworth Young, an experienced rheumatologist at Charing Cross, London. Antiphospholipid syndrome, also known as sticky blood or Hughes syndrome, was first described in 1983 by Professor Graham Hughes and his team at Hammersmith Hospital in London as a syndrome that involves arterial and venous thrombosis with prominent cerebral involvement. The first serological evidence of the disorder was the finding of a biological false positive serological test for syphilis in 1952. The syndrome is particularly important because it can affect all organ systems and hence it can present to any specialty. The syndrome is under-recognized and under-diagnosed in all specialties. In psychiatry, there was a paucity of research about antiphospholipid syndrome overall. I had the privilege of meeting Professor Graham Hughes in November 2013 at the Psych Scene Symposium. As you can see, Professor Graham Hughes outlines some important clues that help in detecting antiphospholipid syndrome. And some of these include migraine, headache, memory loss, and transient ischemic attacks and young strokes. As you can see, cerebral involvement is a common feature in antiphospholipid syndrome. Why psychiatry and why the brain? Phospholipids make approximately 60% of dry waste of the brain and therefore play an important role in neurodevelopment. Autoimmune reactions against key brain phospholipid antigens can result in both a structural breakdown and functional interference, thus leading to the pathogenesis of psychiatric syndromes. Antiphospholipid antibodies are a heterogeneous group of antibodies. The three main antibodies include lupus anticoagulant, anticardiolipin antibodies, and anti-beta-2 GPI. We have outlined some other important antibodies in our paper. Antiphospholipid syndrome can affect all organs and therefore can present to a range of specialties. As you can see, when it affects the brain, it can present with psychosis, affective disorders, and cognitive dysfunction. An important clue in detecting antiphospholipid syndrome is a skin manifestation called levito reticularis. We talk about this more in our paper. Antiphospholipid syndrome is also known as the Cinderella syndrome and is considered one of the two major diseases of the late 20th century. Despite this, it continues to be under-recognized, even by the medical profession. In this article, on the right-hand side, you can see a patient case and the devastating consequences of missing antiphospholipid syndrome. In our paper, we provide you with the background. We talk about phospholipids, antiphospholipids, and the brain. We then talk about the pathogenesis of psychiatric symptomatology and other manifestations of antiphospholipid syndrome. We focus on neuropsychiatric manifestations of antiphospholipid syndrome, which include psychosis, affective disorders, cognitive dysfunction, etc. We also talk about Sneddon syndrome and levito reticularis in more detail. We fi finally end our article with future implications for psychiatry. Is Hughes syndrome or antiphospholipid syndrome the new syphilis? Syphilis was considered to be the great imitator for several years because it presented with a range of neuropsychiatric manifestations and affected a range of organ systems. SLE, or systemic lupus erythematosus, took over that mantle as the reduction of incidence of syphilis took place. It now appears that APS may be the new great imitator. 
We look forward to your feedback and comments about our paper. We hope that you enjoy our paper and feel free to contact me with any comments that you might have. Thank you for listening.